So um, I love the story about Opa escaping from the um, prisoner of war camp. But Umi, there's a great story about Umi too. Umi, your grandmother, uh, was a 19-year-old girl, and she was spending the summer at her great at her grandparents uh, on the farm in Berlin, near Berlin. No, in in uh, Prussia at the time, and. Uh, a gypsy came by and she wanted to read Omi's hand and like for money yes for money Omi thought she was going to do it for nothing but the, at the end she wanted some money for it but the gypsy said to, to Omi at that time she was 19 years old you will always marry a man you will marry a man who will always wear a uniform and Omi thought well you know I'm 19 what do I know I'm still in school almost and uh, and then she met Opa at a dance in Berlin when she was back in her house in Berlin. And she married Opa. She went with her best friend, uh, Elmi, Tante Elmi, oh, okay. who was afterwards my godmother. But Elmi and she went to this dance, which was really sort of a ball. And her mother always made lovely ball gowns for Omi. Anyway, they met and then they started dating and they saw each other a lot. And before Opa was transferred out of Berlin, he he proposed to her. Do you know how long that was, like their courtship? I don't think it was very long because he was there in 35 and they got married in 36. So anyway, Omi never gave it another thought of that story until Opa then was already in, well he already was in uniform then and then the war was there and we were evacuated and and then uh, she found somebody else said you have another not a gypsy but some seer or something mm -hmm. you know those those women who were left behind during the war they were always hoping that they get some kind of information and somebody told her you have a daughter who was born in the first week in October, and that's when your husband will come home. Oh, I didn't know that part. And she had never, uh, uh, wait a minute. So Upa did come so, home. So actually, on my, on my birthday, on October 6th, the bell, we had just come back from evacuation, and the bell rang two, two long, one short, mm -hmm. and it was Opa. And my sister Katrin and I, because our houses, the Americans had occupied. Well, I know about the cigarettes. Oh, you do know about yeah. the cigarettes, yeah. So tell so, about the fact that he wore uniforms all his life. So he was a uniform, and then, of course, he had to apply for a job after he came out of POW camp. And he applied, and he, because the army is apolitical, and the, they had a program called denazification, oh. which the Americans insisted upon. But mm. the army didn't have to go through that because they were apolitical. So Opa was became a policeman. He had been a major in the army, and he now started with a nightstick and a moped in a two-man <laughs> police department in Nürtingen, close to Frickenhausen. Oh, where he's from. Where he's from. And we lived there, and we went to elementary school there, and we got packages from America, care packages from Aunt Garth and Aunt uh, Marie on Long Island. And Opa slowly rose in the ranks, a little bit already then. Mm -hmm. And then they... They be, they got the police department got a jeep, and Opa used to go out into the forest because the retreating German army was going mining the forest of their retreat. So Opa for what mines? Oh. So so to 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 uh, unexploded unexploded mines. So whoever came after them would be blown up. Right. Well, right. if they went the same way. But so Opa took the jeep, and one time I went out there, he took me with him, and he was going into the forest, and he was blowing up mines, which is wow. which is a very dangerous. very dangerous thing. 
And one time he blew up a mine and he blew up a wild boar with it. Oh, oh God. A wild boar went in fuzzies all over the place. And Opa actually collected some of that meat to eat, but it is so gamey you wouldn't oh. want to eat it. And um, then he went to the police academy and passed a certain number of tests. And then he was, t and then he taught at the police academy, which is when we moved from Nürtingen to Freiburg. Hmm. And uh, that's dad then progressed, and he. So he was always in uniform, teaching. whether it's a police He was police always officer. in uniform. And then they have these progressive tests. And he always did so well on tests that he became the, um, the state commissioner of the state police in northern Baden. State and commissioner of state police. And that for was, the state of for Baden. For the state of Baden. It's not Baden-Württemberg? Well, Baden and Württemberg, they had you know, different areas. Oh. It's like Montgomery County and, okay. you know, but, but this oh. was just the whole northern part of the state of Baden. <coughs> and, you, and Opa was a very well-beloved chief. Even in the middle of the night, it, if there was an accident and they had to move out, Opa would get out and he would be there too. And they really loved him. They called him Väterchen. Väterchen. <laughs> Väterchen, like daddy. But, but, Adolf was not a popular name, but I guess. no. But they Did called they have a him, anyway. They no. They called him Dolf, Dolf. and of okay. course his employees called him. You know, they yeah. called him by yeah. by his by his yeah. rank. They called they called him by his rank. Okay. So, so that he was, and he retired from there. And then did Omi kind of one day go? Wow, that that gypsy was right. Oh yes, of course, she always told the story because it was really an extraordinary story. And Opa, when he finally died uh, at age 83, he did not wear a uniform anymore because he was retired, but he was buried in his uniform oh, that's cool. in Denslingen. And there were 700 people there, his, his former chief and the, follow, the guy who took his job. They all came and they did. They gave speeches at his funeral in the church, and then uh, his daughter uh, Ursula you. gave his eulogy. You, and, uh, me, yeah. <laughs> I gave the eulogy. It was a fabulous eulogy. I wrote it myself. Tante Ketta just made a few changes, and while Uwe and Volker and Tante Ketta were crying in the first pew in the church. I was up there talking about life with our father and which wasn't always easy which well didn't mention that because you know when you die everybody yeah, yeah. becomes the same but anyway years later I was um, people remembered that so well because it didn't private people did not do eulogies it was always the the priest or the vicar or, or did it or Colleagues in Germany. In Germany, here, yes. But I, I did it, and it, years later, I was stopped on the highway because I was going too fast, and the policeman who stopped me looked at my driver's license. I always kept my German license, and he looked at my driver's license, and he said, uh, "There's no problem here at all." And I have to tell you, I remember the eulogy you gave for your father. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. That was a lovely story. Thanks. That was really good.